On today's rap report, we're going to discuss the issue of transgenderism. And I'm telling you right now, up front, this is one you're probably not going to want to listen to, especially if you profess to be an atheist, because the issue of transgenderism, well, it completely and utterly demolishes the argument of atheism. We're going to discuss that on today's show. We're going to go through, and for evidence of this, we're going to look at none other than Bill Nye, the science guy. Yeah, we're going to look at what he says and see whether or not there's actually science behind this that's actually refuting the argument of atheism. We'll probably talk about our Bible giveaway we're doing and some other things. We'll probably play some games as usual. So stay tuned for a good show. Welcome to the Rap Report with Andrew Rappaport, where we provide biblical interpretations and applications. This is a ministry of striving for eternity. For more content or to request a speaker or seminar for your church, go to strivingforeternity.org. All right, well, welcome to the weekly edition of The Rap Report. This is the longer edition. I hope you are subscribed to and listening regularly to The Daily Edition. Those are a two-minute podcast daily, so they're short, quick, dealing with different things. I think the last week that we've been dealing with is the issue of logical fallacies. We've gone through to help you identify what some of the typical logical fallacies are. We've dealt with things like the straw man argument, the ad hominem argument, poisoning the well, and then we're going to wrap it up with a view of what makes a logical argument both valid and sound, and what are the differences between validity and soundness when we talk about logical arguments. So I hope you're getting those. Those are just two minutes. You can consume the entire week's worth in 10 minutes. So I hope that you subscribe to The Rap Report. You can look it up on any podcast app that you have, download that, and you'd be able to, to listen to those. I would also ask, would you do us a favor and write a review on iTunes, Google Play, I don't know if uh, Screecher and uh, what, are, what are the others? There's uh, I, uh, TuneIn and Spotify and all the others where we are, uh, all those places where we are. If you would write a review in wh wherever you can, uh, that would just help us. So we, uh, we know that you're being blessed by this, that you're uh, watching these, enjoying these. We hope that you're getting a lot out of this. Uh, the, the, I should say that I am Andrew Rappaport from Striving for Eternity. If you want to find out more about Striving for Eternity, go to strivingforeternity.org. Now, we're going to deal with an issue today that is a little bit more sensitive maybe to younger viewers. I would say that if you're an adult, you may want to listen first before you let your children listen, just as a precaution. Uh, also, I should note that we are giving away a preacher's Bible. That's one of the New American Standard Bibles that a very heavy cover uh, paper so that the, when you take notes, it doesn't bleed through. It's a $200 Bible, um, nice goat skin, very soft cover. And we are giving that away April 15th. How do you enter? Well, easy. You either follow Andrew Rappaport on Twitter or follow Striving for Eternity Ministries on Facebook. And then share the Rap Report episodes everywhere you can and hashtag Rap Report. That's Rap with two Ps. So if you do that, we will see that and we'll be announcing the winner April 15th. So that's going to be something we really look forward to doing for you. Uh, before we get into this topic, I just want to, you know, I just want to play a quick commercial for us before we get into this, and that gives folks who are listening some time to get the little ones maybe in another room. Ding dong, Jehovah's Witnesses. Ding dong, Mormons. Christian, are you ready to defend the faith when false religions ring your doorbell? Do you know what your Muslim and Jewish friends believe? You will if you get Andrew Rappaport's book, What Do They Believe? 
When we witness to people, we need to present the truth. But it is very wise to know what they believe. And you will get Andrew Rappaport's book at whatdotheybelieve.com. All right. Thank you, Todd, for that. I do encourage you to get What Do They Believe? And that is a good book on dealing with different religions. Uh, I happen to know the author pretty well, being him. All right. So this week's rap report is one you should not listen to. I'm telling you, in this episode, we are going to prove that transgenderism, if that's right, if we're going to argue for transgenderism, that the arguments made for transgenderism defeat the argument for atheism. They make the argument for atheism self-refuting. Many atheists have been pushing for transgenderism. We're going to get to that later. And I'm going to show you how that refutes itself when they do that. Now, let me give you a quote from uh, uh, Chaz Bono. He's a transgender. He says, quote, there's a gender in your brain and a gender in your body. For 99% of people, those things are in alignment. For transgender people, they're mismatch. That's all it is. It's not complicated. It's not neurosis. It's a mix-up. It's a birth defect like a cleft palate, unquote. Now, what you end up seeing in this quote is that he is trying to normalize definitions by giving them new terminology. He's basically trying to say that, that this, is, this is just a birth defect. It's just something that we got wrong at birth and we need to straighten out by, in, like maybe with a cleft palate through uh, surgery or things like that. But he, he's trying to normalize it in this, this quote. And when we deal with a, a, transgen, a transgender, uh, we have to realize that we're dealing with new definitions of terms. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we're dealing with new definitions of terms, of terminology, in an attempt to normalize something that was previously identified as a mental illness. And actually, we're going to see from a psychologist who makes that argument. But one transgender poster had some interesting t- t- statistics that we need to be aware of. Here are the statistics. Quote, 34% of trans people attempt suicide. 64% are bullied. 73% of trans people are harassed in public. 21% of trans people avoid going out in public due to fear, unquote. Now, I don't know if these statistics are accurate, but, but let's just say they are. The thing that this doesn't do is give a comparison to other groups. There's plenty of other groups of teenagers who don't feel comfortable going out in public. They, don't, they, they attempt or feel the, the need to attempt suicide. They feel bullied. They feel harassed. So the question is, is this, these statistics given something that is true only of those that are in the transgender community. This is the thing we have to deal with. We have to be aware of the fact that these statistics are gonna be true, truthfully, for many teenagers. And that's really where these, most of these statistics come from. Many people of that age in our society are unfortunately feeling the need to take their own life because of being bullied. Unfortunately, we also see some that don't take their own life right away. They take others' lives. The question is, you know, just because they're bullied, does that mean that we should make changes? We should stop the bullying. We should keep anyone that's afraid of going out because they're going to be bullied. Well, we should try to work on preventing the bullying. That's for sure. But our culture today uh, is that the the LGTB community are the ones that are actually doing the bullying. And, and this is not even arguable anymore. Um, you do not see them making lawsuits against Islam or, or other groups. It's Christianity. And they are going out of their way to do this 
they're going out of their way to go after Christians, specifically targeting Christians. I've said this before um, in different podcasts, different shows I've been on, but in, in the 1980s, when I was in college, late 80s, uh, I remember I had, I was the only, well, there weren't too many of us on college campus during Christmas break, uh, being uh, most, basically the international students. My f- folks lived in Florida. I was in New Jersey. So I didn't go home. And so basically there was no one there but the RA, that's a resident assistant. He came over to me. Okay. I admit he was drunk. I, to this day, don't know if he was just trying to see my reaction to looking at a homosexual magazine. I don't know if he had those inclinations and was just trying to get, gauge my reaction. But I do know is he asked me to read an article that he saw in the magazine. Now, he said he got the magazine in the janitor's closet. Don't know. Interesting article, though. The article he wanted me to read was an article trying to argue for how to make homosexuality mainstream. This article laid out a game plan back in the late 80s. And basically, this game plan that they had was that they had to be a victim, but they wanted to be a victim of people that actually wouldn't victimize them. So they wanted to be a victim of people who would, who would seem like in the culture to be going after them when they don't actually go and do any harm and wouldn't go suing them and things like that. And they gave an argument of why Christians should be that group. The reason they said that is because Christians wouldn't actually do anything. The article actually said the Christians will actually, in the end, push our agenda and help us. But we have to always remember we must be the victim. That was basically the paraphrase of, the, of what their argument was, and which is very, very interesting because it's exactly what we ended up seeing. They led this to a T. They went into the schools playing the victim, saying that because they're victimized, they need to be accepted. They need to teach acceptance. They need to go into schools to get acceptance. And then they can go into working with corporations and companies to try to help make a plea and get donations to prevent the bullying and the attacking that the Christians are doing. And then they would be able to go after the Christians and start suing them. The reality is, years ago when I was a child, the argument for homosexuality is you shouldn't have an issue with what we do in our own bedroom. The argument that was returned, the reaction argument, was it's not going to stay in the bedroom. And as we see today, it hasn't. And what do they have now tried to do? They try to say Christianity should be restricted to the church. Where they wanted to come out of the bedrooms, they want to restrict Christians. And this is what we end up seeing. And this is why I do think this is a major issue. This is something that has to be dealt with. And the reason so many Christians deal with this issue is really because we are reacting. We are responding to the communities and the culture's attack on us and when we're not actually doing the attacking. So I would argue that the ones being bullied are the Christians and we're being bullied by those who claim to be bullied. All right. But you know, the real issue I see in this is, and I will give a quote from, and I'm going to mispronounce the name, Andri- Andrielica Pelica, Pe- Pelagica. I'm sorry, couldn't get that right. But what you see in this quote is an argument that not only does it need to, do they argue for acceptance, but they want celebration. Look at this quote. Quote, we're human beings. And this is a human life. This is reality for us. And as we ask for acceptance and validation for what we say we are, it is a basic human right, unquote. Now, first off, this is actually a logical fallacy known as begging the question. This is where you must start with the conclusion that is trying to be argued before you accept the question. Okay. So the argument here is you must accept that this lifestyle is a human right. And then they go on to try to argue that that's the conclusion. But notice what it says. This is a reality for us. And we ask for acceptance and validation. This, this means that they want to be celebrated. They want 
even Christians, and this is why they go after and they're, they're challenging Christians and suing Christians who don't celebrate their lifestyle. That's a form of bullying, no matter how you look at this, okay? So throughout this argument, I would challenge someone to ask the questions, does this apply to a serial rapist or a murderer? They were born that way. They make that argument. The pedophile says he was born this way. Is being born this way make it a human right? Does this automatically give us a right to say that this has to be not only accepted, but validated? Should we do that with the serial rapist who wants to be left alone because he feels he was born this way? Should, should they be celebrated? Should they be accepted? Should they be validated? No, there are, is a difference between the way we are born and the responsibilities we have to society and the, the morality that we must live by. And this is the issue that we have to, to deal with. Now, before we embark further into this discussion, what I would like to remind us is the fact that we are talking about people and not issues. I understand how easy this is to argue for politicizing this issue. This is a political issue. I agree. But as Christians, we are dealing with people, not the issues. Our battle is not a battle in the government realm. Our battle is not a battle of political issues. Our battle is a spiritual one for the souls of those who are going to spend eternity either having eternal life with Christ or spend eternity in a lake of fire. Our battle and our concern should always be as Christians for the individuals who are struggling and make no bones about it. People who are transgendered are struggling. That This is the whole thing that pushes this issue. This is the whole thing you end up seeing. If you speak, as I have, to people that are transgendered, you will hear the struggle. You will hear the the, the battle that goes on within themselves. We have to realize these are hurting people. We need to reach out and lovingly care for them. That is our mission as Christians. Okay? So these are individuals who are struggling both to fit in into society and also to fit in with themselves. Most of them, not all, but most of them are not trying to make some political statement. And yet many Christians and conservatives will argue with them over a political things when they're, they're not even concerned. They just want to live their own life. However, they do want acceptance from the culture. And, and many of them are being caught in, in crossfire between people who want to make political issues. Let me give a challenge to the Christians listening. We need to be focused on people that will face God as a judge not on the issues of our country. 10,000 years from now, the, the political issues of our country don't mean a thing. In fact, Christians, I've said this before on, on, on the it's different podcasts that we've done, whether it be with the Muslim immigrants or with guns. As Christians, we need to be more focused on God's kingdom than America. Okay? We need to be focused on that which is going to last for eternity. So let's begin with the question. What is transgenderism? And we hear it talked a lot about. But, you know, up until a few years ago, one's gender was determined by biology. Whether you had an X chromosome or a Y chromosome made you, you know, male, female. You looked at the chromosomes. Gender had always been a scientific issue based on the autonomy, sorry, anatomy and chemistry of the chromosomes, your DNA. But transgenderism has to do with the way people think and feel their gender actually is, rather than what the chromosomes or anatomy prove out. Therefore, transgenderism has more to do with the way people identify themselves 
than the chemical makeup of their body. Thus, this is not about biology, but about the soul or spirit. It's not about science, it's about psychology. If transgenderism is true, then we are more than just chemical reactions, as our atheists will argue. And we're going to look at this in more detail. When we recognize that a major, uh, or sorry, when we recognize that a majority of children who experience strong feelings that they were born the wrong gender grow out of those feelings by adolescence then we have to realize that the encouragement of five and six-year-old children to change their gender when they will probably grow out of this, well, it would be wrong. It would be wrong to encourage something that growth on its own will rectify. And many of these people are being hurt. We're going to look at one example in a bit. But many of them are being hurt. There was an article just recently that I saw of a 10-year-old drag kid. He doesn't say drag queen, but he's, he has been doing drag for four years now. He started from watching a TV show when he was two. This has been encouraged by his parents. And that is a thing we have to recognize. They, 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 the parents are involved in this. The parents are having an effect on this. And that is something we have to recognize, that this is not being done just by a decision-making of a, a, a six-year-old to say, I want to be a drag kid and go out and do these things. So please recognize this. A lot of this is our culture and more so parents that are encouraging this. And many of them are, uh, a lot of times you have single moms who are encouraging boys to act like girls. There's articles that we saw, I recently saw of where they're trying to teach girls, they're teaching the boys to, to play in a kitchen and teach the girls to say no to them. Well, they're trying to, they're trying, adults are trying to force kids to accept the values they want them to accept. Um, rather than teaching acceptance, they're trying to encourage a change in gender. But we're going to miss. So let's deal with this. Uh, there, you know, there's many theories of how uh, what's called gender dysphoria occurs. Some people have to think that it has to do with the brain, that, that people uh, have a male brain in a female body or a female brain in a male body. Um, some others think that it's just the psychological environment of the childhood that's the dominant factor. But the reality is when you look at these things, no one really knows what causes this gender dysphoria. Then again, neither does anyone know the reason why rapists and murderers that continue doing those act that way either. There's many factors that come into play. And I think many of those factors really come down to the breakdown of the family. I think that's the biggest issue that we have to deal with. And it, one of the big issues that must be addressed from our culture is the fact that we've moved away from thinking and reasoning as a society into a feeling-based society. That's a major change. This change is not unique. It's happened many times before. You, we've seen it in Nazi Germany. We've seen it in, in, in you know, with Mao Zedong. We've seen it many times in culture where a culture changes from thinking-based to feeling-based. It is done often for reasons of keeping control, um, be, being able to make major shifts in a culture, and it can be very dangerous. Why? Because people aren't thinking through these things. Now, we know that the professing atheists will always say they're the reasonable ones. They, they use intelligence. They have to come up with websites like we're smart. I guess we wouldn't know it if they didn't tell us, just saying. But this becomes significant with issues of atheism because 
as the atheists are going to argue that they have science and reason on their side, however, these atheists are also pushing an issue of transgenderism as normal. I saw this firsthand in the 2016 Reason Rally when a major part of their platform was to address and push the LGTB agenda. This was their platform. This is an, a rally of professing atheists trying to make a difference politically, and the major part of their platform was to push this view. And this view, as we're going to get to, demolishes the atheist worldview. See, transgenders speak about differences between gender that they're assigned at birth and the gender that they identify with. They speak about um, having a gender that can be identified outside of the chromosomes, outside of their, 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 their DNA, their chemicals, outside of what science would say. When they speak of gender identity, they mean that a person's internal sense of his own gender and so this is an argument against atheism. This proves atheism false because atheism is going to argue that we are just chemical reactions. When you look at atheism, that there is no God, we're just purely a material world, we are the results of chemical reactions and nothing more, then we should be completely driven by our chemicals, by the autonomy that makes us up. When we're, our chromosomes, our DNA should dictate. If we have male chromosomes and our anatomy is male, then genetically we're male and we should act male. We should identify male and the same for female. But when we talk about transgenderism, we're talking about how someone feels or identifies themselves well, right now, you've blown atheism out of the water. Why? Because it's not about chemicals. It's not about that, that chromosomes that you had, whether an X or Y chromosome. No, it's all about the identity. Therefore, the acceptance of transgender identity, identity defeats the argument for atheism. Transgender identity is not based on chemical reactions, chromosomes, or anatomy. It is based on something outside of the material world. It is based on the immaterial feelings of a human being that you cannot explain without an immaterial source. We are more than just chemical reactions. And I'm going to say that though I do care and feel for those transgenders who are struggling out there, and I'll tell you right up front, if, if you are struggling, if you're a transgender and you're struggling, I will be more than willing to talk with you. You can email me. Email us at info at strivingforeternity.org. I'll be happy to talk with you and try to help you with that struggle because you should not have to struggle. We should try to work with you to help you with that struggle. But the fact that you have the struggle, the fact that you identify as something of a different gender than you are chemically made, <clears throat> than the, something different than the way you were born scientifically, biologically, means that you are not just a sum of chemical reactions. And this is a huge thing. You know, there are those who are, and we should deal with this, there are those less than 1% of, of, what is there, like 7 billion people in the world that have this uh, unique condition where you're not able to actually tell if they're male or female. They, they seem to have both body parts, but both are not functioning properly. And so what ends up happening there is you, you have those children, typically either it's medically taken care of that is like a cleft palate type of thing where so that they can function as one of the two genders. Now, people will look at that small percentage and say, see, it's not a binary thing. It's not male or female because you have some that are both or, or intersex is what it's now called. 
Well, that's a very small fragment and we shouldn't accept the, the whole culture on less than 1%. But we should not be surprised by any of this. For we have a society that has been attempting to reject biblical revelation with the concept that there is no such thing as objective, absolute truth. They want to give up those absolutes because they can't explain those absolutes without God. And so in their change and their, their shift from an absolute objective truth, our culture has gone to a truth that is subjective. It is not only or is it a subjective truth, but it is one that you're not allowed to have any external authority outside of the individual, whether that be the government, whether religion, family, no other authority should tell us what to do but ourselves, how we identify. This is what the culture is valuing. It values the autonomy of the individual. We have a culture which is one that's supposed to challenge, the, have the individual challenge radically anything that, that they see as being unfit. You're not supposed to challenge the way the individual identifies themselves. Hint, hint, hint except if you're a Christian. Christianity is supposed to be challenged by our culture, but anyone else, that's okay. As we've seen earlier, this does not apply to rapists and murderers who say they're born that way. So therefore, the culture does make distinctions between the inclinations that someone has at maybe birth or after childhood and the way that they should behave within culture and whether culture should accept it. So the fact that somebody feels that they were born a rapist does not give them the right to carry that out, and we should not accept that in our culture. The culture for a long time has been at war with Christianity. We've seen this a long time ago. We saw this with the issue of marriage. Marriage has been under attack for a very long time. And we, we saw this in not only the attacking the husband and wife in promoting divorce, but we've seen this in the redefinition of marriage, and now the gender issue is being attacked. And atheists support much of this. They support this because they have a common enemy that they want to defeat, and that is Christianity. That's why they'll side with Muslims. They'll side with transgenders. They'll side with anyone that will go against Christianity. However, in their attempt to defeat Christianity, they have accepted an argument that defeats their worldview. Now, as we address the issue of transgender identity, we move from the realm of science, as we've said, where the claim is to have evidence to one of psychology. This really is where the realm fits. And we should quote, since we're dealing with this, a well-known psychologist, an expert in his field, Dr. Paul R. McGruff, McHugh, sorry. Uh, now, he's the former psychiatrist-in-chief at John Hopkins University. Uh, he was a you know, uh, distinguished uh, service for the, as a professor of psychiatry, who said that transgenderism is a, quote, mental disorder, unquote, that merits treatment, that sex change is, quote, biologically impossible, unquote, and that people who promote sexual reassignment surgery are collaborating with and promoting a mental disorder. I'll have the, the links to that article in the show notes so you can look it up. You know, we see this with Ethan... Uh, with, uh, with Mr. Anthony, uh, e Alan Anthony, E-L-A-N, I forget, I don't know how to pronounce that, but he's a, a man who, trans, who transitioned at the age of 19 and, want, and transitioned back from, he transitioned from male to female at age 19 and transitioned back to a male 20 years later. And, and he says this, quote, 
I started to realize that I could have dealt with my own issues so much better without changing my body because that brought so many more difficulties. Detransitioning is not and unusual as one might expect, but it is underground for a number of reasons and the trans community is not happy with discussing this, unquote. I'll have that article also linked. But what you end Same up note. seeing there, what you, what you end up seeing there is here is a man who was struggling. He's, he can no longer have children because of the surgery and he regrets that. Many atheists have a desire to overturn God's divine order and in doing so want to overturn God's created order of male and female. But in return, what they have done is defeated their own world view. One must ask, where does the insanity stop? People seem to be able to to see a difference between someone like a, a Rachel uh, Dunzel, who is, who is a civil rights activist who claimed that she identified as being a black when she was actually born white. And she got exposed. She, she blamed her parents even for forcing her to try to live white when she was actually black. People can see a difference there and can identify the difference between someone who is black and someone who is white and see that she can claim this identity and it doesn't work. The same is true, unfortunately, for gender identity. Now, I don't say this in any way to be mean at all. I have a, a, a care for anyone who is struggling with this. We do need to reach out as a society and help them, not encourage it. The damage that is being done to our society will not be known for many years. In fact, a group of American pediatrics have been outspoken against the practice of providing hormone treatment to children. They made a statement that said, quote, young children are being permanently sterilized and surgically maimed under the guise of treating a condition that would otherwise resolve itself in 80% of them. This is criminal, unquote. Don't blame me for saying that. Those are experts in the field of science and medicine. One underlying issue with transgender identity is the idea or concept that, that true freedom is found in asserting a, our radical independence in trying to be what we identify as rather than what we are. And what the Bible teaches us is that our true freedom is when we embrace who we are. Abandoning our, abandoning our nature does not lead to freedom. It leads to death. The simple reality is that atheism focuses on the body, on chemicals, chromosomes, and believe that there is no immaterial part of humans. We are just the product of chance and chemical reactions. And atheism believes we're the product of these things and everything we do is a result of material entities. And yet transgenderism focuses on the soul and the, not the chemistry, not the chromosomes, not the anatomy of the human being. This focuses on how one feels and identifies. These are two diametrically opposed worldviews that cannot coexist. If transgender identity is real, then atheism is false. As the transgender identity issue is discussed, let us go to those who profess atheism and let us see some clear examples that the transgenderism issue defeats their own worldview. Let's go to none other than Bill Nye, the science guy. And we're going to see in these videos, I want to play a, a couple of videos. We're going to first play a couple of commercials, so it gives me time to set some things up. But we're going to go to some commercials. And uh, the, after that, I want to play some uh some commercials or sorry some some videos from bill nye the science guy and see how he defeats his own argument 
We'll be right back. Can you answer the following questions for your children or for the person to whom you are witnessing? Number one, is the New Testament reliable? Two, can you explain the Trinity to me? Three, how is Jesus both God and man? And a slew of other questions you will be able to answer if you get Andrew Rappaport's new book, What Do We Believe? It will help you a ton. Get your copy at whatdowebelievebook.com, whatdowebelievebook.com. Striving for Eternity is a Christ-centered ministry focused on equipping people for eternity. And they provide speakers and seminars that come to your church with expertise in theology, hermeneutics, world religions, creation science, evangelism, presuppositional apologetics, church history, and expertise in sexual abuse in the church. For details on their seminars and to request a speaker for your church, go to strivingforeternity.org. Striving to make today an eternal day for the glory of God. All right, so here we have Bill Nye, the science guy, dealing with ice cream sexuality. Now, I'm going to say that we have a, a, our friends from the council. If you're not familiar with the council, you can go to do a search on your podcast app for the council. They put out some regular uh, podcasts. They haven't been putting out some recently, just saying, guys. But uh, they're here, and as they want to... Uh, chime in on these videos they're going to raise their hand and i'm going to stop the tape and uh look at and we'll we'll deal with this uh we're going to cut this up and, and not play it in full because well, we'll play it in full we're just going to stop it as we need to because so much needs to be corrected with this now i will link these two videos that we're going to show and discuss so that you have them and you can see them if you're listening on the podcast so let's play this person like but not everyone sees it this way. But there are lots of flavors to sexuality. Like, why are we here, Vanilla? Damn! Oh, this again? Come on! Okay, so the this again is that there, these are ice creams, ice cream cones of different flavors. And what you have is, a, what they're screaming about is ice cream conversion therapy. So the idea here that you're going to see is there are different flavors of ice cream. And the argument is going to be made in this is that there's different flavors of sexuality. And if you listen closely, <laughs> Bill Nye destroys himself on this. And so, John, you, you have a comment on this. I was just going to make a point that you might want to trump the video uh, volume because uh, you can barely hear it. Yeah, I can't. I'm not sure if I can turn it up any louder. Roger that. Okay. I will we'll try. Do the best. I will try. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix it in post if we need to, which will be hard since we're stopping it. But, okay, so, so this deals with ice cream conversion. Let's listen. Chillax, <laughs> Strobs. Settle, everybody. Settle. Now, I've spoken to some of you about my theories on the nature of being ice cream, which have no basis in science. Now, notice that. The, he, they're arguing that th this has no basis in science, right? That's their argument. They're making that claim that this is something that has... Now, notice that the... the so, you get the idea. This is vanilla. Vanilla is supposed to represent the Christian. He's supposed to be the one that everyone's going to be against. Everyone else fits in well with each other, but not Vanilla. Vanilla wants to convert everyone to himself. That's going to be the argument. It's the science of feeling. And as Vanilla, I feel that I am the most natural of the ice creams, and therefore the rest of you should just go ahead and also be Vanilla. Oh. It's the one true flavor. No! <laughs> Don't make me stop being strawberry delicious. Oh, Christ. Look, no one can make you stop being strawberry, strawberry. Okay, now notice this. This is the, here, this is the beauty of this argument. He says, no one can stop you being strawberry, strawberry. What is strawberry? Strawberry was strawberry. This whole argument is the idea that someone can change their gender but what this ice cream argument is actually doing is saying, well, if you're born male, you remain male. 
if you're born female, you must be female. No one can make you change. You see how they end up undermining their own argument? John, what do you think about this? Or Vincent, sorry. I just think that he's trying to import a, a racial undertone to try and equate it to a sexual preference or a sexual undertone in this. It just, it just seems like he's taking racial arguments and, and bringing them into this whole idea of, of gender and, and sex. But is that not how we've seen this culture do it, though, Vince? I mean, have, have we not seen them try to argue that, that, that sexuality is like the racial issue is a civil right in the same way? So, I mean, if, with this argument, you're right. You could make the, why, why, are I, why am I uh, assigned to one race then? Yeah, this, it would be, you can make the same argument for that. So you pretty much make everything absurd. You just are what you think you are. And the, the rapist can make the same argument and the same with the murderer. John, what do you think? Well, two tactics that I, I've, I've discovered on this, and this is, um, this, this is a, a common tactic. First of all, it, one issue is, you notice the, the, the one ice cream guy with the British accent. Well, now, why is it that they put a British accent guy on there? Because, and this is something that they do a lot on the media, on the news and all that, they stick a British guy onto and, and start talking about whatever science. It, it's it's a tactic that they say well if if he has a british accent he must know what he's talking about because he's intelligent and so i think that it's a common tactic i think that i see i mean um secondly the the, the second thought i thought was um doesn't a strawberry ice cream start off as vanilla and then they just put strawberries in <laughs> so now look don't anyway. go using facts and science against their <laughs> feelings <laughs> now you are sure. right that i mean british yeah, people do sound more intelligent what vincent yeah i mean you really to get these other flavors you're just adding on top of the base you're just starting with Ice vanilla cream. or plain <laughs> right <laughs> Which is the argument that they're trying to actually argue in this is they're trying to make the argument that vanilla wants everyone to be vanilla because that's who they are. But the argument that they're trying to say is, well, everyone was born different. But notice, they're trying to say that the way you were born is the way you must remain, which is not what transgenderism argues. So Bill Nye is undermining the argument for transgender. But let's keep listening. Why, well, why can't, why can't strawberry turn into chocolate well, they're saying that they can't which is the exactly. whole thing this is why i say bill nye defeats his own arguments without even realizing and we're going to see even more in the next video but what you end up seeing here is they're arguing that strawberry can you know remain strawberry and you can't convert to vanilla that's the whole thing and so this video, Bill Nye is defeating transgenderism, if, he, if he's right. Or transgenderism is defeating atheism. They both can't be true. They are mutually exclusive. The strawberry, or it be salted caramel. I just think if you want to get right with the big ice cream in the sky, change your flavor by wishing to be vanilla. What if now, notice that. Notice this logical fallacy. This is something that no Christian, because they're trying to make it out Christians, the big ice cream in the sky. And what do you see? No Christian tells people when they're, that the, in order to get right with God, you have to change who you are. That's not the argument. In fact, I know people who uh, practiced homosexuality for many years and became Christian they still have a desire for the same sex the same way many christians have a desire for people of the same of the opposite sex but guess what just because we have a desire for people of the opposite sex doesn't mean that we have the right or the moral authority to go and have sex with them it's wrong outside of marriage period and this is the issue okay so so you cannot go and do these things just just because you have a desire to. And the, the thing is, I'm, if I'm 
as I have met with many people who practice homosexuality and shared the gospel with them, and they've asked, do I have to change who, who I am before I can become a Christian? The answer is no. God does that. Maybe he won't change your inclinations. Sometimes he does. There's some people who practice homosexuality that then have a desire for someone of the opposite sex, but that's not the case for everybody. And God may not change that in the individual, but no one's saying they have to change to get right with the big ice cream guy in the sky. Um, the reality is that we say we have to get right with God by the way his standard is, which is repentance and recognizing that we're, we violate his law, not to change our nature, which is what makes this whole argument that Bill Nye's trying to do a logical fallacy. The big ice cream in the sky is chocolate. Blasphemy. Everyone should pretend to be vanilla until they no longer have the urge not to be vanilla. Notice that is a statement no Christian makes. We do not tell people they should act Christian until they no longer have the desire to not act Christian. But when you, when you have poor arguments, these are the only arguments you can make. Vincent. Sorry, I got to get used to the hand raising thing. <laughs> um, it just, it seemed what, what they're positing as Christian or the religion is, is some kind of workspace system. I mean, it, it's not Christianity. It's not a re accurate representation of Christianity, which we can all assume that that's what they're implying. But we, you know, let's not be too hard on them because every false religion, which is basically everyone but Christianity, does teach a works-based system. So they do teach a morality. And that's why when they look at these and say, well, all religions teach basically the same thing. In the sense of teaching a moral system, that's true. That's not what Christianity teaches. And they don't understand Christianity well enough to know the difference. Christianity does not teach a moral system. It teaches that we get right with God because we are violators of God's law and what God did on the cross, that's how we get right with God. And it's what he did for us, not what we do for him. Very different than every other false religion. Uh, I did not urge to be pistachio. I am pistachio. Notice what they said. I don't urge to be pistachio. Well, this is, again, this undermines the actual argument for the transgender because they're urging to be something different than they are. This argument would only make sense if pistachio said, I urge to be mint chocolate chip, and I'm not, so I'm going to change, which is the whole thing they're arguing against Mr. Vanilla. Hey, mint chocolate chip. Sorry I'm late. I was busy being two awesome things at once. Cool. Uh, not cool. Pick a lane, butt stain. Vanilla's trying to convert us all again. That's nuts. No offense, nuts. Come on, Vanilla. Nobody wants just one flavor of ice cream. No, notice this. No one wants one flavor of ice cream. In other words, we, we, the best thing for society is to be different, to have differences and and have variety. Why? Why is that better? Because Bill Nye says so? Who's Bill Nye on this subject? Wouldn't we rather take the opinion of the one who created us? Something tells me that his opinion would count more on how we should be because, well, he designed us. I do. Haven't you ever wanted to be in a politician? I, I can't. I can't. Come on. It's natural. Notice, it's natural. N notice even what they're saying. Don't, Dean, you want to be a Neapolitan, which is what? That is three different flavors in one bucket, right? <laughs> but they're th still three separate flavors. And now they're trying to say, oh, well, it's just, it's natural to, to intermix. And what they're trying to do is now, here's the irony. And what you see in this, what's this whole video showing? That vanilla is somehow wrong for wanting to convert everyone to vanilla. And what are they doing right now? They want to convert vanilla to their way. This, again, shows the issue. 
they think it's wrong for vanilla to want to convert, but they got no problem wanting to convert vanilla to their view. Democracy. And strawberry fresh from the field. It's so creamy and delicious. Mmm. Big ice cream in the sky, help me. It's good. It's like... Okay, and that's Vanilla giving in to the others, and they're all jumping into a bowl of ice cream together. And so we end up seeing here, we're going to get Bill Nye's conclusion and what he thinks on this video right now. That's cool. He thinks that was cool. A bil brilliant premise. A brilliant <laughs> premise. And, oh my God. and his premise, his brilliant premise, just undermined everything Bill Nye tries to stand for. But hey, maybe that was just a fluke. Maybe, maybe Bill Nye actually does hold up to science over identity. Then again, maybe not. Let's look at this one from Bill Nye on sexuality and the gender spectrum one thing's clear about sexuality there's a lot more going on than meets the eye female or male gay or straight pink or blue now i'm not sure what pink or blue is i i never heard of that sexuality but notice right from the the get-go begging the question he wants to prove that there's a variety and what is he going to do? He starts off with the assumption of the thing he wants to prove. But oh, wait. No, Bill Nye, the science guy, ready to ignore science? We were taught to see these as binary. Okay, because male and female is binary. That's an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. He wouldn't there's no way he would actually argue against X and Y chromosomes, do you think? What do you think, John? Well, uh, notice how he just said, made a statement, we were taught that we were binary, as if we were saying that science of old was incorrect. You know, the, the old thinkers, they, they all thought that we were just two, two genders basically it, saying the irony the irony is in his show he would used to teach that the binary the xx was yeah yeah the earlier shows xy was male uh, he used to he, you got clips of the show where he was promoting that <laughs> right and they had to remove that particular episode because the science changed <laughs> is that it <laughs> so we can't trust the science of today because it might Prove everything wrong tomorrow. This is atheism as its best. Okay, let's see. I mean, do you, what do you guys think? You guys, you, you guys could vote even. Do you think there is a chance that he is going to actually argue um, that the, the chemicals don't prove the gender? What do you think? Oh, he's bought into that. He's bought into it. Let's <laughs> let's see. Now we're realizing it's more like a kaleidoscope. And this stuff isn't just for adults. Parents know this already. Kids explore gender expression, attract. Okay. So notice what he's saying. Parents know this already. Kids explore gender ex expression and attraction. Yes. And what have the pediatrics said? 80% of them will outgrow this by adolescence. So when we're encouraging it, we're encouraging something that they're going to grow out of. Now, if you're against the idea of teaching children to grow out of immaturity, why do you send them to school? Just, just saying. John? Uh, a couple of things that just kind of brought to mind here. Notice the, the, his tactics of wanting to have flashy lights and graphics and uh, special effects all throughout this to make it look like it is very cool. Uh, second point was what he just wrote here. Kids explore gender expression and attraction. Um, so, so it's the kids. So now the kids are the ones 
those who, who are dictating what science originally said, I mean, or are changing what science originally said? I mean, why do the kids seem to have a voice in this? Just because they are undeveloped in their mind um, as far as how they perceive, how they, they you know, they, sh they should act. Um, why do they have a voice over, you know, what, what gives them the authority <laughs> over what's supposed to be just natural? Well, I mean, the real thing is we recognize that children are immature. They need to grow up. Exactly. And mature. And yet we're going to now base all of culture on the immaturity of children. It kind of tells you where our culture has gone. Right. I, I don't know if you're aware, because I know you're not exactly uh, hip with all the uh, stuff that's going on in the uh, outside world there, Andrew. Wait, wait, but, wait. wait. Um, are you saying that <laughs> I'm not pop culture literate? I would say that that's an accurate statement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, there's an old show that, that can't, that is doing a reboot. Um, it's called Roseanne. Okay. Roseanne Barr was, you know, an old actor, I mean, a, a comedian slash actress. And um, her new show, she just started a whole new season of her show. And so basically it takes place pretty much the same family. Um, but obviously they're, they're grown up now. And so um, one of the daughters has a son who is gendered confused, <laughs> basically. Um, it's, a, it's a boy that is, likes to dress in women's, uh, in girls' clothes. And um, on the show, he obviously, he's acting very feminine, but, it's, um, but he does recognize himself as a male. Um, he just likes to have what he says. He just likes to pop. He likes to have color. You know, he obviously, you know, he, they're trying to say that, you know, he's struggling with his gender, ident gender identity. Um, but I, I find it kind of funny how their approach to it is saying that this is a perfectly normal thing and that all we need to do is just accept it. And kind of what you were saying earlier, um, how it's the homosexual society that wants to force us to not only acknowledge it, but also celebrate it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, th this, this next part of this video blows me away. And if, if anyone disagrees with what we have now said throughout this whole show, this whole podcast, and tries to argue that Bill Nye would not as an atheist, would not defeat his own worldview to push transgenderism, get ready. Here it is. ...before they've ever heard of a spectrum. Take sex. We used to think it was pretty straightforward. X and a Y chromosome for males, two Xs for females. Okay, that seems pretty simple, right? An X and Y chromosome or... You know, you, you either have an X, X, or an X, Y. Seems pretty simple, right? That's science. That's biology. That's chromosomes. That's DNA, chemistry, anatomy. I mean, whatever you want to call it, right? Now, he wouldn't throw that under the bus, would he, to push transgenderism? Yes, he would. But we see more combinations than that in real life. Okay. What are the other combinations do you think he's going to have other than XX or XY? Let's see if he gives us those other combinations. Even for people with just two sex chromosomes, hormones can vary wildly. So Hormones. Well, he didn't give us a difference of the, the chromosomes, did he? Nope. The chromosomes are either XX or XY. Let's see what else he says. What makes someone male or female isn't so clear cut. So it's not clear cut. In other words, it's not based on the science. It's not on biology. It's not on the chromosomes. It's not XX or XY. That's what we're now dealing with. He's thrown out the science and he has to to promote transgenderism. That's the point. If you wanted the proof, Bill Nye, the science guy, is the one doing it. 
a well-known professing atheist, and he is throwing out science for his view on sexuality. Let's keep listening. How about attraction? Some people argue... No, notice it's more about attraction than the science. It's about that thinking, the identity, the feeling, that immaterial part of a human being, and not about the science. Natural thing is to only be attracted to the opposite sex. But in practice, it ain't so simple, kids. Some people are gay, some are bi, some are asexual, and some will take whatever they can get. <laughs> no. And so what you end up having is he mentions a whole bunch of behaviors. Have the chromosomes changed? No, no, they haven't. They haven't changed at all. It's the behavior that changed. John? Yeah, I was going to say, um, well, if that's the case, then if my behavior is to like my dog and have, have relations with my dog, then he can't argue. It's totally normal. It's fine. Yes, he's, he's just given up that argument. Mm-hmm. Know what I mean? It's another sexy sliding scale. When you throw in gender, it gets even more colorful. By three or four, most kids identify with a gender, and it doesn't always match the sex they were assigned at birth. And a person's gender identity may change over their lifetime. And culture is getting so it may change over their lifetime. Amazing. Now, if we're just chemical reactions, the product of a chemical reaction, how would that change over our lifetime? We should react within the chemicals that we were born. That's what atheism would teach, but that's not what transgenderism teaches. And Bill Nye, the science guy, just gave up atheism. Us ...new ways to express all of this. How you dress, how you act, talk, how you present yourself to the world. It should be up to you. Sure, this might make things confusing for those who insist everyone pick an M or an F. But people, we have to listen to the science. And the science says... We must listen to the science. <laughs> oh. oh, Bill, you mean the science you just gave up? Is that the science we should listen to? You, you see, this is the thing these guys do is they go, oh, the <laughs> science. He gave up science. This is about the feeling, not the science, Bill. This is about how people feel they identify and the attraction, not the science. The chromosomes haven't changed. You're either X or you're Y. You're male or you're female. That's the reality. There are those very, very few mutations where they have extra chromosomes. And we recognize those as, as that. But the reality is, when he says the science has all these spectrum, you know, someone who is bi or gay doesn't have a different chromosome than someone who is male or female. That's the reality. He's given up the science. We're all on a spectrum. Our labels, our fashion, even our washrooms are still catching up to that truth. I think you'll find when we look at sexuality this way, it is more complicated, but it's also a lot more honest and it's more interesting. I learned like interesting would be better. I mean, I I'm guess this male guy who's been living in this world. But this stuff to me, from a scientific standpoint, is just cool. So, so from a scientific standpoint, it's just cool. Yet he's not arguing for science. But this is the this is the deception. When you throw science out there as if you're speaking of science when you really are not. And he says science is a process by which we understand nature. However, what is he doing? giving up nature. He's not talking about the anatomy of a person. He's talking about the attraction of a person. Two totally separate things. This is the process by which we understand nature, by which we understand our place in the world, how we all fit. The, our place in the world. But when you deal with an atheist doing science, it is our place in the material world only, not the immaterial. You can't explain the immaterial world in an atheistic worldview. That's why they have to reject absolute authority, absolute 
uh, morality. Those have to be rejected. There can't be an absolute standard, like absolute truth. It has to all be subjective. But once you do that, Bill Nye, guess what? You've given up your atheism and your science. Because this is not about the physical world. This is not about the chemical reactions. This is about identity and feelings and attraction. And so every one of these insights is just so exciting for me. We, working together, can dare I say it, save the world. So everybody, that's our show. Okay, so he thinks he is saving the world. John, what do you think? Okay, to be fair, for if you were to ask a normal, educated atheist what his thoughts are about Bill Nye, they would probably say that the guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> okay. Um, but keep in mind that this show, this particular show that's on Netflix, um, is targeted for the young minds, the little kids, because, you know, the parents grew up with Bill Nye. So, hey, let's watch, have our kid watch this stuff too. So this is not necessarily uh, educational, but I would say it's indoctrination. I mean, it's basically, it's, it's getting the kid to think differently into their worldview and not what's a normal worldview. Oh, I agree. The good news is striving for eternity would love to come to your church to spend two days with your folks teaching them biblical hermeneutics. That's right, the art and science of interpreting scripture. The bad news is somebody attending might be really upset to discover Jeremiah 29 11 should not be their life first. To learn more, go to strivingforeternity.org to host a Bible interpretation made easy seminar in your area. Would you consider donating to Striving for Eternity? This ministry is one that tries to reach out to some of those smaller churches that most people, most speakers want to avoid. But by our monthly donors, it allows us to get into smaller churches and provide for them the seminars and conferences that usually only larger churches can do. We can do that because we have monthly supporters who on a regular basis support us so we could support others. Would you consider being one of our monthly supporters today? You can go to strivingforeternity.org slash donate and set up for a monthly donation today. Your donation helps us to be able to spread the gospel around the world, to be able to disciple others, and to provide resources for churches and people who are struggling to grow deeper in God's word. Consider donating today at strivingforeternity.org slash donate. And we thank you very much for your consideration. And we do. We do thank every one of you who donate to help us continue to put these podcasts together. We have a Patreon that you can support us on. You can look in the show notes and find that. We are very thankful for every one of you who donate. We try to do something that others do not. We try to go into churches that are smaller and give them the equipment, the, the training, the resources that they could typically wouldn't get, actually, because a lot of the bigger speakers <clears throat> don't want to go to them. You know, they want to go to the big crowds. We don't want size to be an issue. So if you, <clears throat> maybe you have a church you want to invite us to come and speak at, we'd be happy to come. You can email us at info at strivingforeternity.org. Also, if you have topics you want us to discuss here on the RAP Report, email us at striving for eternity, sorry, info at strivingforeternity.org, and we'll take those in. We add them to our list. We're hopefully eventually going to get them. If you have questions you want us to answer, send those to us. <clears throat> we do ask that you'd review us on line review us on on itunes and all the other places that you may be listening to us let us know you're listening let us know what you think emails tell us the good the bad the ugly what you think about the show so that we can improve 
Uh, I'm going to forgo. This is a longer episode, and for that reason, we won't play our spiritual transition game and our uh, logical fallacy, um, name that fallacy. But I just want to give the guys at the council uh, any last words. You guys have anything you want to share? Anything you guys have planned up on the council? Not really. We we just crickets. We continue <laughs> to proclaim the gospel daily to anyone who wants to join us. We're mostly on the Discord servers right now, but we'll talk to anyone and everyone about the gospel. Yeah, all and, day long, all night long. Really, we got people there all the time. We have a lot of people there. We even, uh, curiously, we actually have a guy who is a transgender who uh, joins in and actually um, he has made the transition already from atheist to Christian, but he still has a lot of issues as far as it, whether or not he can be, um, be a man, uh, be whether he has to be a, back to being a man or should he continue having um, female <laughs> thoughts, I guess, <laughs> whatever you want to uh, label it as. Um, and then we also had a, another uh, gal who was a group in a, um, uh, a church of Christ uh, church, uh, which is very cult like, if you don't know. And um, basically, because of that bad experience, she left, uh, she left that church, left that faith. And was an atheist, and through the time that we've spent with her, she is now a Christian. She's back to being in the faith. Um, there's still a lot of time, a little things that we still need to work with with her and all that. But, um, but you know, God is doing a wonderful, amazing thing through this uh, little ministry of ours that we're doing through Discord, and that uh, you know we're meeting a whole bunch of new people, and we are showing them the gospel. So. Indeed. And that's, that's the neat thing about what you guys are doing there. And so with that, we, we, I'll say this, if, if there's any out there, whether atheist or transgender, you want to contact us, you, you disagree with us, or if you're, you agree with us, let us know. Email is info at striving for eternity.org. It's also in the show notes. Let us know where you disagree. Look, if, if you are a transgender and you want to discuss this, maybe I'll bring you up with, hey, let's come on, let's discuss it. We'll do a whole show where you and I can discuss this and discuss the issues. I have no problem because I don't have a fear. I don't fear those who practice homosexuality. Um, I don't fear that at all. But I do have a fear where they'd spend eternity, and that's I would want to share that. So encourage you guys, if you're listening to this, subscribe to The Rap Report. You can also subscribe to The Council. John and Vincent are members of The Council, so search for The Council. Search for Rap Report. That's Rap with two Ps. And please share this everywhere you can with your friends, those who you think might need to hear this especially those professing atheists who claim that they support transgenderism. And uh, we just ask that you'd strive to make today an eternal day for the glory of God. This podcast is part of the Striving for Eternity ministry. For more content or to request a speaker or seminar to your church, go to strivingforeternity.org.